Hi, welcome to Juice on the Fly. Hey, good to see everybody again, sort of. Yeah, right. Seeing. <laughs> we like when you guys respond in the comments because then yeah. we feel more like we're seeing that one another. There. Yeah, definitely. So Jesus on the Fly today, Jesus on the Fly, we always talk about Jesus' words and actions in the Gospels. And so we're still in the book of Matthew. We're going to be there for a while. And we are talking about, it sounds like more healing today, but we're going to talk about some mm -hmm. different aspects of uh, the different kinds of things Jesus heals, I think, mm -hmm. um, in this one today. So, Pastor yeah. Dave, Matthew 9? Correct. Verse 27 through... Mm, 28. 34. 34. 27. Matthew 9, 27 through 34. Okay, Pastor Dave, we'll read that. Okay. And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying aloud, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it done to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about it. But they went away and spread his fame throughout all that district. As they were going away, behold, a demon-possessed, oppressed man who was mute was brought to him and when the demon had ca been cast out the mute man spoke and the crowds marveled saying never was anything like this seen in Israel but the Pharisees said he cast out demons by the prince of demons awesome okay wow. um wow so, yeah, got the Pharisees on the end there having their ideas. They want to put in their yeah, ideas about weird, it. <laughs> weird stuff. But I think when you see the idea that he's healing someone who's blind, and so, I mean, there's some ideas in that, but then he's healing someone who's mute. So there's some ideas in both those things. When you put them together for me, I, I really contemplate the fact that, like, these are major ways we see the world and communicate. Like, these are ways we develop perceptions if you will with um our eyes and with our mouths you know those are like really big pieces of the puzzle like the one missing i would think would be ears obviously um as far as communication mm -hmm. goes so i don't know what sticks out to you in the passage dave i think that um well i didn't realize it I, I assumed it was going to say demon possessed man. That and is interesting. Demon, demon oppressed, oppressed man. man. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, the what do you think the 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 difference is? I feel like oppressed man recognizes not just that it's there. Um, I feel like possession is like ownership almost. Um, yeah. But oppression recognizes the greater picture where it is like pushing down on him like he it is making him mute like it is right. um capturing keeping him captive it's limiting him mm -hmm. from yeah that it's kind of like blocking his ability to um just be himself you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and uh and it's kind of crazy because i don't know at what point maybe he was mute i mean if he would like most likely not like from birth i don't think because that I think typically they see the like demon oppression thing come later in someone's life, but I can't say for sure. But I think that um, that kind of makes me think as far as he, maybe he did speak before and then he was kind of shut down mm -hmm. and then he could like re-speak again. And mm -hmm. so it could have been where the people witnessing, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just speculating. <laughs> they may have heard him speak before and then they realized now he was unable to speak and now it's just like boom he's right back to where he was before mm -hmm. you know if you go through like therapy and stuff like that like in our in our world today i mean it's just like a process and you learn and you grow and mm -hmm. you try to figure back out you know if you've had like a stroke or something you gotta relearn but like there was no relearning for him. It was like instantaneously he's back. So it's like obviously miraculous. You know, I think that's like the distinction of Jesus' miracles of healing versus the healing we experience in our lives. Um, one I think is 
I mean, while it's not less miraculous um, for us, you know, the healing we experience when we go through relearning, when you've lost someone um, or someone's lost their, their voice and their ability to speak, like from a stroke, like you said, or um, the ability to walk from a traumatic brain injury or just anything like that, there is healing and it is miraculous. Like we feel it as God's miracle working in our lives. Um, the, the distinction I think that we see when Jesus was present in the Bible is that the miracles, they always seemed instantaneous. And I think we so often want that. Like we want the instant kind of miracle of God. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think that what one thing you're saying is like so often now God's miracles, God's healing is not like that. It's more of a process in our life today. Um, that doesn't make it less miraculous, I guess, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think anyone being able to uh, regain their senses is like, especially like speech, is really quite miraculous to see the transformation. Right. And then you, and then you like the therapist. You're like, wow, you're like a miracle worker because they're like, if it's like for your kid or <laughs> oh something, yeah, like, if you've oh ever gosh. had a little kid in speech therapy, yeah, like, and then they start talking. I remember like Zeke's first words were an entire sentence from speech, having speech therapy and occupational mm. therapy. And I mm. think as a parent, you experience that like, whoa, <laughs> like this is yeah. really cool. But I do think you're really accurate that so often now it feels slower. And I think we get yeah. frustrated with yeah. God in that. And I think mm. we need to be honest about that. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think that even like for the people in the story, like they could only like, handle it I guess is what I'm saying like like the first story is of uh, the the demon oppressed man or wait am I getting it switched the first Which story one? is the blind is the two, yeah the two blind two guys. blind men okay yeah so Jesus does that miracle and then those guys are like we can't handle it like we have to tell everybody like we can't like hold on to this this know? is too exciting yeah so they couldn't like really they, they couldn't have enough self-control to handle it, you know, as as the power and how awesome it is. I do not judge them. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's good. I mean, I think it, it's kind of funny. It's like Jesus says, don't do it. And then it kind of... They're like, but, we're but just so overwhelmed. Like, God's amazing. But it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to tell everybody. But then the second one, the reaction of like the Pharisees is like they couldn't handle it, so they're like, uh, it was just demons or whatever. So like they couldn't handle it. Like, yeah, in that is interesting. Like in the first yeah. one, Jesus' fame spreads throughout the land. It says, right. like, <laughs> no, we can't be right. And then the second one, the second one is the reaction instead is the Pharisees and. Okay, all right, that just makes me think like about the times in life where how how often are we the Pharisees for someone else's miracle? <laughs> like, like, you know, how much like, are we the autocorrect? Is that right? For like, <laughs> it, like when, when the miracle doesn't come for us and it comes for someone else or I don't know, like I think we have to back check ourselves. Like, how are we spreading Jesus' fame with good, like God-filled things? And, and when are we like... The cross check of like uh he's not mm -hmm. really is that really god like you know mm -hmm. and obviously there's a, yeah. a balance in you know identifying god where he's at according to his word and his sacrifice through jesus but i do think there are real places in life where people are trying to share their story of how jesus has worked in their life and we're like attributing it to other things for them like Oh, it's really nice that you worked so hard <laughs> to get mm, that. Or you, yeah. you know, like we, we sometimes show up, I think, as Pharisees. And that's mm -hmm. an important point. Yeah. I also like the different reactions. Like, well, first of all, Jesus asks, like, do you believe that I'm able to do this? So that's kind of like asking, do you think I can handle it? Oh, and of course, yes, the answer is, well, they believe it. So there's the yes, say, oh, yes, Lord. And then the other one is where the people react, never has anything like this seen in Israel. Never was anything like this seen in, in Israel. Israel. And so I think it's like this is kind of a, um, a reaction of like 
And it's somewhat of a reaction of belief that this is like, you know, I, I think there's a sense of faith in that too. Like with those words, like, oh, never thing has ever happened like this in Israel. Like there's gotta be like, he's, he's so amazing. You know, mm-hmm. something is really different here. Um, I like that. So word they kind of have a response of like, wow, like he can handle this and he can like, he's, he can handle Israel and, and Ooh, like the everything. because he can do this thing picture. he can do the bigger thing yeah. for like our people Israel and right. for Not just, the people of God yeah, right. yeah that's really right. good Ooh, okay we have to wrap this up the thing that I like that you just said too is the word like something like there's this idea that we I think we want God again to show up for us um, and I think a lot of times we will get that when we look at other people's stories. Like when we engage in being open to seeing where God is working in other people's lives, I think we'll be more likely to see it in our life. So that's mm-hmm. like the response um, of, you know, he was able to do this. Nothing like this has been seen in Israel. Like that is a cue for us, I think, when when we see that in other people that we understand that it applies to us too and that is true of the body of christ too when god does something big for someone that's the coolest thing in the body of christ is we get the joy of it too like mm-hmm. we suffer yeah, and we're, rejoice together we're, we're so part of it. yeah so like when someone's healed we're not like doing the whole world comparison thing like oh my god i wish i got the healing <laughs> you know yeah instead right. we're like yeah. yes we mm-hmm. are healed like when someone experiences that and i i think that's mm-hmm. unique i hadn't thought of that when i read those words so i'm glad you pointed that out like that mm-hmm. that a tribute to israel is about the wider community i think that's really mm-hmm. good yeah okay 12 minutes in this has been jesus on the fly matthew 9 we'll finish out matthew 9 next week we'd love to hear from you all so feel free to put any comments or questions um in the videos and we will see you next week. All right, see you. Have a great day.